Good evening. My name is Alyssa Brooks, and I'm the Marketing and Programming Coordinator at IU Cinema. On behalf of the entire IU Cinema team, I'd like to welcome you to our virtual screening room and tonight's screening of Les Enfants du Paradis. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that IU Cinema is built and operates on the ancestral lands of the indigenous people of the Miami, Potawatomi, Delaware, and Shawnee nations. This screening marks the return of our ongoing Staff Select series, which highlights programming choices from across our full-time and part-time staff. Tonight's film was programmed by IU Cinema Technical Director, Elena Gracia. Elena is responsible for the training and supervision of our graduate assistant projectionists and all technical aspects of IU Cinema presentations. She has more than 35 years of film presentation experience at film festivals in the United States and abroad, including festivals for Telluride, Turner Classic Movies, Traverse City, Tribeca, and Sundance, as well as the Dominican Global Film Festival. She also served as the presentation supervisor in the Hollywood and Southern California cinemas for the Hateful Eight 70 Millimeter Roadshow. So let's turn it over to Elena, who will introduce the film. Thank you, Alyssa. Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's presentation of Les Enfants du Paradis, the 1945 French film by director Marcel Carnet. I'm so pleased to be able to share Children of Paradise with you all as part of IU Cinema's Staff Select series. Before we send you off to experience this renowned classic, considered by many as the greatest French film of all time, I'll share my own reflections as to what made this my number one choice, to see again myself and to share with our IU Cinema patrons. That the film was completed at all has been considered a miracle. Great hardships were endured during its production. Filming locations bounced back and forth between Nice and Paris during the German occupation of France in World War II. Imminent personal danger was daily experienced. Cast and crew included pro-Nazi collaborators as extras working side by side with resistance fighters as well as a composer and director, excuse me, composer and designer who were Jews actively being sought by the Nazis. For a deeper understanding of the challenges the film's production faced, I recommend the Blu-ray from Criterion Collection. Our audience manager, David, is putting that link in chat for you right now to click on if you'd like to go right to Criterion's website to find the Blu-ray. The discs contain, among other special features, a 2009 documentary on the making of the film. Considering all the difficulties of film production in wartime, what, one might ask, did this collective art of artists choose for the subjects for the film's subject? The answer is the Paris Theater District of the 1830s. Many scenes immerse us in a great throng of humanity milling in the marketplace, gathering together in the backstreet taverns and boarding houses, and filling the balcony of the theater to overflow. It is quite probable that public gatherings were considerably unsafe in occupied France, just as we are now restricted. And perhaps they too were hankering for another time and place. And so these artists of the 1940s chose to create a period drama of the 1830s. Each part of the film opens with the rising of a stage curtain, part one, the Boulevard of Crime, then seven years later for part two, the man in white. Both parts will play from the link shared in the slide at the end of this intro. The first time I watched Children of Paradise was in 1984 from the portal window of the booth while projecting the 35 millimeter print. Art houses were struggling financially due to the new in-home technology of VHS tape rental. The Reagan White House was considering an end to funding for the National Endowment for the Arts and Humanities. Yet even in these times of economic hardship, the Roxy gave to its patrons and the film community of San Francisco 
an annual free screening of Children of Paradise on Christmas Day. Patrons were treated to what critics have called Carnet's masterpiece at the height of a film movement known as poetic realism. Now, if you'd like to know more, you can read IU Cinema's A Place for Film blog by Jesse Pasternak. I think David is putting that link in chat uh, to find the article as well. The script written by the popular French poet Jacques Prévert gives clear voice to each character's passionate expression of self. I find it so inspiring and invigorating to hear the open and direct speech of the lovely and fiercely independent Garance. And circling around her are the four, four male characters based on real French historical personalities of the 1820s and 30s. Of these four men, it is the character of Baptiste, played by actor Jean-Louis Barrault, that I am most drawn to and found most memorable. The story goes that it was Jean-Louis who brought the initial script idea to the director so that Jean-Louis could create a film portrait of the real life mime and his personal hero, Jean Gaspard du Barreau. The actor Jean-Louis's personal passion for the art of mime is the heart of this film for me. Every time he is on screen, my eyes are drawn to him, whether he is the man in white or in his street clothes. That he was able to perform with such eloquence and poignant expression speaks to me and tells me why I chose this film, why the Roxy gave it a free holiday screening and perhaps demonstrates what motivated the French filmmakers to, el to this elevated level of artistic creativity. To me, P Children of Paradise is a revelation of how the arts can sustain us in times of crisis as we look both to the past and forward with hope to a more viable future. Thank you.